Oh, okay. So I promised you guys a rant about veteran and military worship as a, because it was addressed in Falcon and the Winter Soldier. As my husband just put on Captain America and the Winter Soldier in the fucking living room. <laughs> Um, but anyway, I made a short, obviously short TikTok talking about it, um, and how Zemo brought it up and basically how we put heroes on a pedestal. And a lot of people try to dismiss it and be like, well, it's Zemo. And he's being, obviously, it's a common trope that the villain is like a little bit right. And then he's very manipulative and blah, 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 blah. And I'm like, yeah, okay, but you know what? But it's still fucking true. And also Zemo isn't a real person. The writers... <laughs> <laughs> wrote that shit in <laughs> so um real people are writing these lines to make a point and the fact that they had Zemo say it was very interesting and it's meant to be uncomfortable I think it's meant to be uncomfortable but it's very true um military worship um apparently is probably a very unique uh, United States thing I'm getting um, sorry, I just came from ballet. This one looked like this. Um, very uniquely American thing. And it is dangerous. And I, I'm, a, as a veteran, as a formal, um, a former Air Force officer, the um, military worship is dangerous. And it's also harmful to military members and veterans. And I will tell you why. But the first part, uh, is I think it's pretty obvious. We can all figure out. <laughs> Is that we've been we've had this drilled into us, you know, since we've been in school, I feel. You know, support the troops, support the troops, or you're a fucking, you know, monster or whatever. And like you want to talk about propaganda. Like we've been exposed to American propaganda since we were in school, ever since we started learning US history. Wars, soldiers, generals have been so glorified. It's not until like you get much older, it and and even that's questionable that you start to learn some of the grim realities of some of these wars and you know and um and I feel like you know propaganda like really came to strength in World War II and and I th and, and it's definitely a, a way of manipulation to um to prevent the public from developing critical thinking about whether or not the United States government is actually doing noble things um across the globe um, they, you know, they create this rhetoric of support the troops. They put us up on a pedestal and they make us gods. They make us look like superheroes, like into this, like American ideal of just like heroism and everything. They make movies about us and like, and everything. And, you know, and it's like, if you don't say thank you for your service to a person in uniform, like you're a fucking monster. I could not even go shopping in Walmart to get some goddamn mac and cheese right after work in my uniform without somebody saying, well, thank you for your service. <clears throat> that is, it's manipulative, honestly, because we should be questioning what our government is doing, because we should be questioning what the military is doing. I'm a political science major, and even... <laughs> Attend, getting that degree from argu arguably the most conservative university in the United States, United States Air Force Academy, <laughs> out there with like West Point and all that, I made sure to take a lot of classes about um, politics and other regions of the world. And that's where I started to learn in my early 20s just how much we have fucked up the entire world. That's when I, that's when I learned. Um... And military worship and painting us as heroes, these larger than life, like totally moral, noble, angelic people. Um, it's manip like I said, it's manipulative and it keeps Americans from questioning, are we doing the right thing here? Um, and it you know, I obviously promotes nationalism like we are the best in the fucking world like look at all the like look how amazing our people are these military members are fucking superheroes when by the way 
Um, <laughs> there's a lot of shitty people in the military. I'd argue maybe even more shitty people in the military than outside because less than 1% of people join the military and the military is like a cult. When you leave the military, I tell you, there are so many things that I still don't really know how to do because I spent about a decade in the military. It is like a cult. It's very closed off. It has different rules, different rules that allow people to get away with some pretty evil shit. And so, and it, and I think this is getting to where this can actually harm military members because um, sexual assault, harassment, racism, it runs rampant in the military. And I don't think, pe I don't think that's a reality that people want to see, Either, it's both within the military and outside. And so whenever something happens that challenges that, that ideal that we are such perfect fucking people, people kind of tend to shy away from it, maybe not even take it seriously. But it is very, very serious. Um, we are all flawed individuals. Putting that uniform on does not make us noble as people. It does not make the military noble. It does not make you noble as a military member. They drill that propaganda into us while we're still in the military that just by wearing the uniform, we are better than all of you. Literally, I'm telling you, like that is what they tell us. They tell us that because we wear the uniform, we are better than all of you common peasant motherfuckers just because of that. They, and that is a very, very dangerous thing. That is a very, very dangerous thing. Look up the Stanford Prison Experiments. You give somebody a uniform, a badge, a rank, some sort of sense of authority, even if it's fucking, even if it's fucking fake, um, they become very, very capable of some pretty bad shit very, very quickly. And that's exactly what happens within the military because of the worship. Because it's not only the people out outside of the military worshiping us, it's us worshiping ourselves. And so that allows a lot of people to get away with a lot of things, especially because a lot of these people, uh, these young people that get recruited for the military, uh, literally just want to go around killing people and shooting things. And that is not an exaggeration, okay? That is not an exaggeration. And I can't even sit here and lie to you and pretend that there wasn't a little bit of that feeling in me when I joined the military, you know? can't say that um so that's so so that so that's how it hurts that that's how it can hurt people in the military but here's another way that's i think very roundabout that people don't think about they make us out to be heroes larger than life strong so strong superman you know we go to war we come back we're just like so much better than the average man or woman but the thing is um that dehumanizes us it's kind of like when I talk about how black people, like, we love to emphasize how strong we are, but because we emphasize how strong we are, we don't like to admit any weakness, which means that we don't go to seek help and healing for some of the trauma that we go through. Um, veterans are the same way, um, because we've been taught that we're supposed to be stronger and better than everybody else. And so because of that, Either we don't get help or people ignore our problems um, because they have not been seeing us as individuals with PTSD, as individuals ha that have gone through assault, that have gone to war and all this stuff. They don't see us as individuals. They see us as these I idealized people. So not only have they put us up on a pedestal and either willfully or on accident ignored our flaws like Zemo was talking about when he was referencing Steve Rogers. I think people also forget that we are human beings. We are human beings with needs, human beings that can be broken and we are broken. We come back broken in one way or another, whether it's a little bit, whether it's tinnitus having hearing problems and a bad back and knee, which we all get, or PTSD like me. We all come back broken. But this concept of military worship and and, and such kind of keeps the public from seeing us that way. And it also aids in the VA being very, like, blasé about even taking care of us. 
Um, I think it very much aids in um, them not being held accountable because people have not been seeing us as people, like I said. They've been seeing us as idols, as an idea, as, you know, these superheroes larger than life, you know, like this just like almost, um, it's almost at a religious level, you know, it's almost at a religious level, but, and then you forget that we are real people with real problems. We forget that we are real ordinary people with real problems and it keeps us from getting help. And I think it also keeps people from helping us sometimes when we need it the most. So um, I think about I think about this a lot, and I am so glad that Falcon and the Winter Soldier brought it up because it's actually something, like I said, that I think about all the time. And I highly encourage, as usual, I highly encourage everybody out there to not be blinded by military worship um, and this whole support the troops rhetoric, trying to guilt you out of thinking for yourself. Use critical thinking, like develop your own opinions based on the information that is out there. Don't feel like because don't feel like because you don't support what the military is doing that you're a fucking bad person. And also, it also does not mean that you're not supporting the troops because if you want to be honest, like it's probably best one of the best ways probably to support the troops is to support not sending them somewhere in harm's way that they don't need to go for no reason. That can also be a way of supporting the troops. Um, because I don't know about some of them, uh, some of y'all vets and military members, but I don't want to (laughs) die. I, (laughs) you know, I was prepared to die, but I don't want to die. (laughs) That's, that's, I mean, you know, if that's something that bothers you, like, that's another method of supporting the troops, but use critical thinking. And whether or not it came from Zemo, which is a very uncomfortable source in this show, the motherfucker was right. Put pe- we put them on a pedestal, we put heroes, we put people in uniforms with badges, with shields, with superhero costumes on a pedestal, and we forget their humanity, and we forget and ignore their faults, and that allows for a lot of toxic and dangerous things to happen, and it allows the United States to potentially, and definitely for sure in real life, go around causing havoc around the world without being criticized by its own people and that is very dangerous so that's my rant on military worship and i am so glad i'm glad that my boy zemo brought it up because i've been waiting for a reason to talk about this and some people might get mad um but i really don't give two heavenly shits about it (coughs) 